All right, so then we will be breaking rule number two because there is a repetition from one to nine in, in here. So there's a number in there that's re repeating for the column. Cool, so that's the column check. Now, this is gonna be going a little bit deeper into the box check. Because we have a very similar data structure as the column, it's gonna be very similar logic as well for the box. So what I'm gonna be doing is just copying and pasting and reusing some code that I already wrote and just renaming some variables so I don't have to write them again. The only difference between the column check and the box check, we're gonna to have to do some math to figure out the box indices. And because how we transversing, I'm gonna be displaying that in the visual. All right, so step number six, we're just gonna copy and paste. Boom. All right, so now here is the most interesting part about this. As you can see, there's there's multiple parts to this problem. Solving each one was like very interesting. You have the row and you have the column, but now we have to do some calculations. All right, now we need to calculate on what box that we're actually hitting as we're going through this particular board and Let's get into that. Each sub box should have its own particular index of where it is in its space. So let's just say from the top row, we're going from zero, one, two. And then from the mid row, we're going from three, four, five, and so on. So like the bottom row would be six, seven, eight. So we know the top of the row for three turns before going to the mid row. So let's write a formula that will essentially get those box indexes for the top row. It looks like before we go into the next boss, the column starts with a multiple of three, so three and six. So if we do the formula J divided by three and J is equal to three, uh, we'll get one. And then if we do that same formula J divided by three and J is equal to six, then we'll get two. All right, and because these are integers, they usually round down rather than up. All right, so two divided by three is actually equal to zero in code, and five divided by three will equal to one in code. So for a rough draft, we have int box index is equal to j over three to satisfy the top row. So essentially this I divided by three will satisfy the top row. All right, so now for the mid row, we have to do something similar with the rows. The next box starts with a multiple of three. We already know from zero to two, I divided by three is equal to zero. And from three to five, I divided by three is equal to one. So if we do the same thing with I divided by three, if I is equal to three, then I will be one. So now let's modify the formula to see how this will work. Let's say if i is equal to 3 and j is equal to 0, box index is equal to i divided by 3 plus j divided by 3, which gives us 1. Thus, if we do a multiple box row by 3, we can get 3 as the current box index at these coordinates. So now the modified box formula will be box index is equal to parentheses i divided by 3 parentheses times 3 plus j divided by 3. All right, so now let's give it some use cases here. So let's test this out for the top row. So if we say j is equal to 4 and i is equal to 2, this should give us 0 times 3 plus 1, which is equal to 1. So that is right. That gives us the sub box for 1. All right, so let's test the mid row. So J is equal to three and I is equal to four, which gives us one times three plus two, which is five. So that's right, so we got that piece. Let's test the bottom row. All right, so J is equal to zero and I is equal to six, which give us two times three plus zero, which is six. So yeah. It works. All right. So this is this is probably the hardest breakdown I ever did, but um, that is essentially how I break down these problems. And I have to use a visual to get these down. It's like no way I can just look at this. All right. Let's good. Let's get into the next step. Let's actually code this up. So box.
All right, so let's get to the last bit, which is the final bit. So after all these checks and they are not false and stuff like that, we should say, all right, return true. All right, so let's get into the, t the complexity of this particular problem. Let's start with the time complexity. So the time complexity of this problem will be O of N squared, where N is actually the number of cells in the board. And of course, as you can see, we have to loop through every single element of this board. So we're going from the top to the bottom to each column. All right, so the space complexity of this would be O of N. And you can think of it like this, even though we allocated and made um, a set in a map in another map, um, it only will run for the number of elements. It's not doing, doing multiple. So it actually would be like three, yeah, it would be like three N because you'd be like N plus N plus N because you have to do each and set every single element and look through every single element. And if by, by any chance, if it was all full, we have to fill up each of those particular, um, those data structures. So we will have, if we remove the constants three, it will just be N. So yeah, O of N. So make sure you subscribe, make sure you like, and make you sure you share this video if you got some value from this video and also comment below of what is the best solution for this problem. And you know, until next time, peace. <laughs>